pretty firm. And then, unfortunately, you have to do this really quickly because if you do it slowly, it will dry while you're working around it. So I have a certain distance that I want this piece to be, and I want the weight of the pieces that are going to stay to be the same because if I change weights this much cut out, it's going to crack. So I'm going to follow this line right here. Are we saying this was good pot, the potters or the DTs? Yes, <laughs> that's where the DTs fought. This one's trying to fall out and I don't like it, so my hand's holding it in. Because I want these pieces to stay in all while I work all the way around. Why is that? Because it keeps its shape and it slows its drying. It's pretty hard on your hands, huh? Uh, not so much. On the underside, I'm just touching it. If it's a brand new one, I can poke a hole in there. But uh, I play the guitar, so I have some pretty thick calluses on my fingertips. So if you decide to go at this, get you a guitar. And you stay like an inch away from that edge? I do, edge. because I'm going to come back and cut it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to cut the edge, too, so I'm leaving that. And that evolved, too. I used to do this with straight lines. I used to do it with the straight, you know, where the bowl really kept its edges. But uh, my daughter and I were having fun learning to draw together. And we'd drive down the road and draw this magnificent oak tree. And when I started doing the lines that branches have all, you know, there's not a straight edge anywhere, really. And uh, so I started jiggling. I got the DTs. <laughs> Do you still have a lot of loss with these? Yeah, um, I do. Uh, so if I'm going to make, say I'm going to shoot for six, I need to make eights pushing it. I, you know, I kind of just know that, and if, if I don't lose any, you know, it's do the happy dance. Can you tell us what that loss means? Like, is it uh, cracks on the, on the two cuts coming in, or is it warpage, or... Okay, I'm going to keep doing it while we're talking because it could cause me to lose it. Um, almost always I'll lose it when I get all the way around, of course, and I'm working on the rim, and it's almost always an issue with um, it getting too dry before I get done. And I've found, at least with my clay, I can't go this way. The clay won't. It's not, it won't afford me to be able to do that. I kind of, if you notice, I'm staying pretty straight out. I'll go a little bit to one way or the other, but not much because it just doesn't work out. So, do you ever, like, finish that part and then spray it and then come back later so it's not continuing to just dry? It's, it's never been successful. <laughs> you just gotta do it fast. Gotta get on with it. And you know, I kind of like doing it fast because it keeps it kind of having its organic nature. I think if I slowed way down, it might get. It's already really tight. I just would hate for it to get any tighter. <laughs> I have this friend, Bob Brotherton. Do any of y'all know him? And, uh, you know, he played a large role in my getting started. and mentoring me some and he's pretty tight potter and he started taking some workshops with Linda McFarland to get loosened up and I was like so how's that working out for you <laughs> <laughs> his pots are still pretty tight <laughs> so you can see I just keep on boogieing around sometimes I'll come in the next day and it's a uh, popped apart in drying, and that's usually because somewhere in there it was unwinding, you know. And it'll unwind a little bit and forgive it, but you can see that it can't be much. Does drying them slower make any difference? Uh, sometimes, this is actually this is a very sweet situation. This is where I love it to be. 
and I didn't think that was going to happen, but it did. This is just like the sweet spot. You mean the consistency of the Yeah, time? it's really nice. Because it's evenly dry. It's evenly dry. It's standing up. It's not getting dangerous out here yet, but, you know, it will pretty quickly if I don't get on with it. That's a little issue right the there. On mine. That makes a huge We're working towards air conditioners. I was going to say, the 90 degrees kind of helps with the drying process. Yeah, it was dry today. I'm sweating on this pot, so we'll see about misting it. <laughs> We're almost there. Plus, this winter, we don't have a heater either. So because this evolved out of cutting, drawing with my daughter, I do call them the Mighty Oak, because they came out of that. When you're looking up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, when you get down to the to this point you gotta think about it. Um, <laughs> and I'm just gonna come up the this way. Just been mindless <laughs> yeah. I'm really happy about that. Okay, that little guy's misbehaving, but we're going to ignore it. So then I just sort of follow the ins and outs and still kind of keep the same kind of edge. <laughs> Hard to do her. If it gets too dry, your knife kind of wants to get away from you, and that's not good. Wow, it's amazing how fast you're working. Yeah, you should watch him when she gets on a roll through. <laughs> <laughs> they start out empty, turn around, and they're full. <laughs> See it flexing? That's a little dangerous. This isn't like watching paint dry. Yeah. Yeah. Slow. This is slow. This is pretty fast. <laughs> pretty amazing too. So we made it. Yeah. If it had the least little bit of play in it, um, I would, you know, like if it was doing a little of this, I would let this sit around for about 10 or 15 minutes before I take these pieces out because it'll want to hold on to them in here and it'll start throwing it off center, which it won't necessarily pop them, but it'll be a problem when it dries. So I do a little of the light cleanup right now while I still have the pieces in. And I like to keep these almost choppy edges that it looks like it's been chiseled at. I like that. I will sand it a little bit, but boy, very carefully. So you can tell it's been drying pretty fast because they're starting to come out on their own.